Hello, Cleaning Nation. It is so good to be with you once again. Welcome to the place that you are going to find everything you need to get the cleaning company that you've always wanted, maybe even the cleaning company that you deserve. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, if you've got questions for me or want to speak to our, uh, uh, speak, you want to hire me to speak at your next event, you can email our producer, Natalie, at nat at growmycleaningcompany.com. Of course, you can always give us a call, 480 648 Four nine, do it now. We love hearing from you, Cleaning Nation. Also, if you check out Grow My Cleaning Company, there is a brand new video I made uh, that, <laughs> without sounding too self congratulatory, is quite frankly awesome. It's totally free. Go check it out, GrowMyCleaningCompany dot com. Uh, if you're looking to grow your cleaning company, it is probably the best free resource out there I know of. Today, we are chatting with Robert Landers from RL Commercial Systems. RL Commercial Systems has been serving the Atlanta, Georgia area with commercial cleaning services for the last four years. If you'd like to reach out to Robert and his team, you can get a hold of them at www.rlcommercialsystems.com. Robert, welcome to the show. Man, I appreciate you having me. Thank you for the opportunity and the time. I'm I'm eager to kind of you know uh, have conversation and learn from you and and kind of maybe give some insight on some things that we're doing to help our business kind of grow and and and, and expand in in our area. Uh, then you're in the right spot, my friend. If you're looking for cooking recipes, I'd have to throw you off my show. <laughs> and then I'll pass those over to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's we do that on Wednesdays. Totally different gig. So tell me a little bit about um, about your company, how you got in the business, man. I love hearing people's stories, and after hearing dozens and dozens, it's like they're like snowflakes, man. No two are the same. So I'd love to hear how you got in the business and uh, kind of your just story of uh, right when you started to where you're at now. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, I've always been an entrepreneur um, at spirit or at heart, um, you know. Uh, me and my buddy, uh, when we were 12 and 13, I mean, we had so many businesses that, that, that crumbled, uh, because we didn't know what we were doing from selling candy to making hats. Uh, we would go to entrepreneur conferences when we were like 13, 14 years old. People would always like make fun of us because we we're in like, uh, suits and clothes that we bought from like the Goodwill that are <laughs> two sizes too big. But, um, you know, we really went because we've always wanted to just be a part of, you know, um, owning something for your own self. And, uh, you know, even through my, my professional career, um, I always knew that I wanted to get back to, you know, having my own business and any position that I worked was to gain, uh, leverage, to gain insight, experience in, to, to be comfortable to start my own business. And I, in 2012, um, at about 28, you know, I finally came to that decision that I thought it was the right time for me to get out and, you know, start my business. And I originally started by purchasing a, purchasing a small uh, investment in a franchise, uh, really just for the structure, for the stability, uh, to learn how to, to market to customers, to learn how to provide uh, that customer service, uh, just to help our business be a little bit more well-rounded. Um, and we were kind of successful in that venture to the point where we were able to purchase ourselves out of our franchise, um, which we're still good partners with and friends with today because they did help us to grow our business. Um, but it was very influential in us growing um, and, and now we're at a point where, uh, you know, I, I feel comfortable with saying we're the fastest growing uh, facility and cleaning company here in Atlanta. Um, we, we, we are, I am the youngest owner of a, of a state sponsored contract in the state of Georgia. Um, and so we're continuing to grow at a fast pace. And, and I think that, you know, by us having this conversation, um, we're kind of looking forward to uh, feedback to uh, facilitate that growth and make sure that it, it becomes like a smooth process. All right. Fantastic. Well, I'll tell you right off the bat, I've never seen a smooth process, but we'll try and smooth out some of the, the high and low spots. How's that sound? <laughs> so you keep saying uh, yeah, we. Are, that, you, are you talking about uh, your company or do you have bar partners? Well, I mean, I, in reference to we, it is, uh, you know, a part of kind of like our culture. Um, you know, I am the sole owner um, and we work with a lot of small business owners ourselves and we work with other contractors throughout the state. Um, so when I say we, it is a collective uh, kind of uh, process in which when we bring on contractors, it becomes a relationship because now it becomes we're assisting them in growing their business and vice versa. So it's it, it's been a really good relationship so far. Cool. All right. So you're the only owner, but you definitely feel like you've got kind of a community in terms of not just the people that work with you on your payroll, but your customers and just uh, the community at large that you kind of serve. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the goal for one of our, um, you know, community initiatives this year, by the end of this year, is we actually do want to have our own service incubator. 
these incubators are popping up all over the country. They're very tech heavy um, focused, but I felt like, you know, there's a lot of uh, momentum in the service industry, even though we're moving into uh, an atmosphere of automation, that service piece is going to be there regardless. So um, our goal is with some of our stronger partners is we actually want to come together and have a collective um, incubator for services and bring in other industry um, leaders like myself and owners to kind of grow this incubator and see what it can do so that we can have a, a vast impact on the local community. Nice. Sounds exciting, my friend. I mean, I'm excited about it. It's something that, you know, that was a part of my original vision when, you know, I first sat down to do my first business plan is that I wanted to get to a point where, um, you know, I was working with other community leaders, uh, business leaders, um, because, you know, one of the best pieces of advice that I've always learned is to surround yourself around smarter people um, and being younger, you know, in the industry and still learning from a day to day standpoint. I try to surround myself around very talented individuals, very experienced people so that I can gain uh, feedback and apply it um, in executing our processes. Love it, love it, love it. I was, yeah, I started my first business at age 22. So I, I know uh, the kind of feeling like you're wearing your dad's clothes and trying to be, you know, all adult in an adult world. So that's, uh, you're, that, I'm excited to talk, excited to honor to talk to you today, my friend. That said, how can I help you today? What's going on in your business that I can, I can uh, give you some sort of service? So going into 2017, uh, you know, a personal, uh, you know, goal of mine is to, Really try to understand that transition from being an owner operator where your hands are in the cookie jar of everything, whether it's accounting, whether it's marketing, whether it's customer service, uh, whether it's compliance with HR. So one of the challenges that I'm seeing is trying to kind of backtrack and, and be more in an executive role and be that true CEO uh, because it is extremely difficult because it's your baby and you do want to have your hands in the pot per se. But at the same time, in order for you to grow, you are going to have to trust these partners that I do want to bring in. But it's so far, it's like, OK, how do I take step one, step two into becoming, uh, you know, more assertive with uh, delegating tasks and responsibilities? All right. That is such a good question. And I think we've touched on it before in the show, but this will be um, I don't know that we've done a full deep dive. So today's the day. All right. Let's let's talk about this. There's a you said a lot of things that I want to unpack and make sure we hit. Uh, one at a time so we don't miss anything. As with just about everything I coach on, everything you're going to need to do to build a multi-million dollar business is really it's mental shift first, tactical shift second. So, so many people want to be like, Mike, just tell me what to do. Just give me a checklist and I'll follow the checklist and life will be good, which would be fantastic as a coach. My job would be so much easier if that's just how it worked. But the reality is truly, 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 we've got to get how you look at your business and your role in that business down first. And then the tactical stuff, which I'm going to share with you uh, on this podcast, will make more sense. Is that fair? Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. I got my pen and notes ready. <laughs> All right. Good thing is this is recorded. So um, <laughs> you're welcome to write, Robert. And you're welcome to just hang out and be present as uh, this will go out. And it's so funny. Uh, Natalie was talking to one of the people we had on the podcast. She's like, yeah, I, w- I woke up and I went for my daily dose of you know inspiration and knowledge and growth and uh, just you know queued up my podcast, started listening. I was like, oh, crap, that's me. She had been on the podcast and uh, was like, oh, yeah. That, that's <laughs> So hopefully that happened to you, Robert. You just go to you know your daily dose of Grow My Cleaning Company. Like who's this city? Oh my gosh, that's me. I, I know that guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all right, well let's hit it, my friend. So mental first meaning we've got to get over that myth of more time equals more money, or it's not fair. Or a lot of times, if you're like me, I was born poor, not at all wealthy. So I had to get over this sense of you know my parents would always work for twelve bucks an hour or some sort of hourly wage, and the my whole paradigm of money was. I do this thing for an hour, I get 10 or 12 bucks or 14 bucks, or if I'm really good, 15 bucks an hour. Um, and minimum wage is, you know, when I was young, just so you know how old I am, $2.35 an hour. Um, so that was wow. kind of the paradigm that you have. And we've got, as business owners, you've got to shift out of that into I create value for the world and I get my compensation is based on the value that I bring. And if I'm able to bring value quicker or faster without any work, um, it's not because I'm lazy or lucky or anything like that. It's because um, I'm working and living like like wealthy people work and live. So we got to shift away from more time equals more money. And it's fair that the people that work the hardest or do what seems to work the hardest get paid the most. If that were the case, coal miners and construction workers would be the highest paid. 
and you know, <laughs> this gave me in trouble, but politicians would probably be the lowest paid, right? There's a lot of golf and travel and hanging around and getting boats. So as long as we've got that sabotaging us in the background in terms of it's not fair that my people actually go clean and I make money off of their efforts, anything else we're going to do going forward is tough. Uh, any thoughts or questions so far? No, I mean, that, that, that's kind of, you know, definitely good insight because, you know, it, as a, as an owner, you, you're, you're in the day to day so much that you're, you're trying to make the most amount of the, of the day with the time that you have, which is a good thing, but it's kind of like making sure that it's value added and that it's not too like, okay, well, I don't, I only, I'm only going to spend this amount of hour on this amount of, this amount of process and just really, you know, becoming a more uh, well-rounded, well-oiled machine so that the processes are kind of going naturally. Correct. A thousand percent correct. So once you've got that mindset of, I increase the quality of my time and not the quantity of my time, everything we're talking about now is going to go much easier. The second thing you're going to have to look at is the systems and habits that you have in place. So many people talk about systematizing their business and having everything kind of locked out and loaded and and working smooth. And that's a great goal. But they overlooked the obvious fact that you already have systems running your life and your business. They may not be written down. More often than not, they're, they're, they're not the systems that are effective or getting the goal that you want or the results that you want, but they are a system. Your system might be to wake up with an alarm clock. It might be to wake up after seven snoozes and what might be to wait till your wife throws you out of bed. But either way, it's a system. So we want to identify that system in terms of what do I do when I go to work? So many people kind of have this habit of, well, I go to work and the employees are there and I get them set and then I do the scheduling and then I do this and then I play Minesweeper for a while and then I do that. And it's just their system is not effective. So you want to identify the system that you've got in place, look at and the habits that you have in place, and we're going to intentionally replace those with high value tasks. A lot of times, the not a lot of times, almost every time, low value tasks will show up, get in your way, interrupt you, wave a red flag. Hey, look at me, pay attention, I need help. And the high value tasks will do none of that. They will just go quietly undone as your life continues to stay the same. So the way to overcome that is to really identify the systems and habits that are running your life personally, um, personally and professionally, but you personally, what systems and habits are dictating your life? Because I can tell you what way you're going to take to work and what you're going to do for lunch and all these sort of things if I can just watch what you've done for the last six months. So we need to identify that intentionally and look at the ones that are effective, look at the ones that are ineffective, obviously replace the ineffective ones and uh, try and dial up the effective ones. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. One of the ways to do that is the box time. And I know we've done that in other uh, episodes or talked about that more deeply. So I'm just going to touch on it. You want to have time in your day uh, almost all of your day should be boxed where you're saying, I'm putting a box around this time and we are. I am going to do this. I'm going to work on systems and processes. I'm not going to have emails or phone calls or texts or Facebook Messenger or anything going off. I'm just going to work on this. And other times you might be the opposite and say, I am going to respond to all the calls that I didn't take and the emails that I didn't take and the texts that I ignored doing the high value stuff. So, And you start training yourself and your employees to know and your customers to know, well, between eight and nine, Monday through Friday, and two to three, Monday through Friday, Robert's available. If I call him, he's going to text me. And if I call him not in that time, he's going to call me back during that time. And you start training yourself and the people that are around you. This is when I'm working on the business and I need to be, and I will be left alone and I can't be interrupted. This is when I'm doing busy work and we can do stuff. And this is time I'm intentionally getting back with uh, customers, employees, all that sort of stuff. Does that make sense from a high level? Yeah, absolutely. I, I can already see myself now like just with you expressing it in the box level i'm a i'm I'm a write down kind of person like i said i do like to take notes so with my calendar i like to color coordinate everything so now i'm like i'm already thinking the wheels are turning okay let me box this off let me do this time for my emails let me do this time for i mean it you say you're not trying to make a checklist but man it's it, it's running smooth yeah. so far it's hitting me like almost like yeah i, I could see it you know will have a, an immediate impact yeah, and don't and let me encourage not just you, Robert, but the listeners. This could be a little tough when you start writing stuff down. A third of you are going to have a mental breakdown, going, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe I've wasted so much time." <laughs> Especially the people going, "I'm working twelve hours a day and I don't have time to breathe or eat or sleep." And you write down everything you're doing. You're going, "Good lord, I'm working two hours and sixteen minutes a day." And 
you know, hanging out at work for 10 hours a day and I feel exhausted. So that's okay. Don't, don't beat yourself up. The big thing is to make the change. And another way to look at this, I like to kind of give picture analogy so everyone can get it is people make sense on budgeting, right? I don't know if you're any Dave Ramsey fans out there. He says you spend it on paper first. You spend all your money on paper and then you go spend it according to what you decided you were going to do, right? You don't just spend however much you want on movies or this or that or the other. You decide how you decide where your money, you tell your money where it's going to go as opposed to just asking where it went. You can take that exact same philosophy with time. So many of us, you know, come home at the end of the day and we get home late and our spouse is mad at us and you're like, you don't understand, baby. I've, I'm exhausted. I've been working so hard. And she goes, what did you do? And you go, I have no clue. <laughs> I wandered around. I talked to a lot of people, but truth be told, I have no clue, baby. I just know I did a lot of it, whatever that was. So we're going to budget, you know, same thing with money. Where, where did all the money go? I have no clue until you look at it. So think of it as boxing time, budgeting time. You're going to tell your time where, where it's going to go and what it's going to do first. And then you're going to go do it. That is not what low dollar people t- deal with. That is absolutely what high dollar people uh, handle. The last piece to that is knowing the right things to do, right? So if you once you box your time and you're budgeting your time, you can decide what it is you're going to do. Um, you have a lot more control. Now you have to make sure that you're kind of dividing your time between high level, low level stuff. Uh, some examples: low level stuff is scheduling. So many cleaners, more on the residential side than the commercial, but so many. Oh, I gotta, I gotta set the schedule. I gotta get the schedule ready. All the, everyone's waiting on me. The schedule that is low value time. Paying bills, worrying about supplies, fixing vacuums, checking on work. Like, oh, did did Susie do this and that and the other? And I'm not saying those things don't need to get done or they're unimportant. They're all very important and they do need to get done. But if you're going to be building a million or certainly a multi million dollar company, you cannot, as the owner, be the one doing that. Just like as a plane takes off. Is it important that the thousand or the hundred hour check is done? Yes. And the oil is changed. Yes. And then all those, everything's yes. All that's important. Does that mean the pilot should be doing it? No. Does that mean the CEO of Southwest Airlines should be doing it? Absolutely not. So those are kind of the low value stuff. The high value stuff that you want to move more and more of your time to, and you'll start seeing your income is directly related with the value of things that you do. The more time that you're scheduling, you're spending, setting schedules, paying bills, fixing vacuum cleaners, cleaning, checking on work, dealing with fires, the less wages you're going to get because those are all 10 to $20 an hour uh, tasks. The high value systems that are going to get paid are stuff like mission, vision, values. What does this company exist to do? And Robert, you already you already touched on that. So you've got some idea of your vision, but what are the core values that you're going to use to get there? Creating systems. That's a, I love systems because you create them once and they pay you forever. Client relations is certainly more so on the... Uh, commercial side, we've got fewer clients that are higher dollar. Um, client relations, culture and community. This is probably the biggest thing that you're never going to outsource is, no matter how big you get is the community that people want to be a part of. What is the culture of your business? Is it working hard? Is it playing? Is it integrity? Is it cleaning really well? Is it family above all else? What kind of culture do you have? That is what's going to ultimately attract your top level employees. And believe it or not, your top level uh your top level customers as well. And the last thing is messaging. And that's really an outsourcing of getting that your message of your values and your mission and what's going on in your company out to the community and creating a culture. Those are the high value, high dollar stuff that A, only you can do or B, you do once and get paid forever. Um, so, and you, you've got the power to do that once you kind of create these boxes and start budgeting your time. So, Again, once you're doing a five ten million dollar company, I promise you, Elon Musk does zero scheduling or paying bills or cleaning or fixing, you know, fixing stuff around the plant. A hundred percent of what he does is visionary stuff, making sure that the culture in his companies is correct, making sure that the messaging to the to the world is good. So he's at a hundred percent. As cleaners, as certainly as we're growing, we're not going to go from zero to a hundred percent, but we are going to start shifting. Uh, where if you look at your schedule, I'm guessing most of you, unless you've gone through this before, you're one of my clients. You are ninety to a hundred percent of the time doing low value work, and the only way you can make more money is to do more of that low value work, and then you get frustrated. Uh, when you're working 100 hours a week and, and not really getting compensated for it. The high value work, creating systems, building client relationships, creating a culture, building a community, getting the messaging out to the universe, that stuff is getting done either not at all or kind of quote unquote when you get a chance. When you start boxing and budgeting your time, start getting... It doesn't have to be a ton. Don't beat yourself up if you're not doing this 40 hours a week. If you can just do this 5 to 10 focused hours a week... Again, focused hours. That means you're not taking phone calls. You're not taking emails. You're not doing 36 things at a time. You're not watching TV. Focus, quiet. This is all you're doing for 5 or 10 hours a week. 
that is so much more than your competitors are going to be doing. And that alone can get you to a multi-million dollar company, especially when your competitors are. not Okay. I've been rambling a long time. Any questions you've got that I can uh, tie up before we hit the lightning round, Robert? I mean, that's not great. I mean, the way that you explained it and expressed it is, is, is visual. And, and I think that, you know, that speaks to me a lot. I mean, the, 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 the visuals that you did with uh, the CEO of Southwest, I mean, that really speaks to me because it, we can value what you just said. So the, the, everything that you put into place or that you've kind of recommended, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am loving Robert Cleaning Nation. All right, dude, we're going to give you the opportunity to give back to Cleaning Nation. Enough of me blathering on. I'm going to give you three quick questions. You're going to answer with three amazing answers. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received, personal or professional? Um, definitely uh, uh, personal. I think that uh, I can go back to college. I'll never forget it. I was in a huge accounting class. Uh, probably about 500 plus students and the accounting teacher on the first day, he said, um, I went to a big university where basketball players go professionally all the time. They come to our school, they get recruited to go to our school. They're superstars. So what he said was, he said, the only difference between them and you is that they found their God given talent. They worked down it, practice it, go over it all the time. They're in the gym a hundred percent of the time. And he said, once you find your God given talent and you put it into practice and you go over it and you learn about it and you research it and you give it your due diligence that it's supposed to just how we go up to them, always asking for their autograph. If you find your God given talent and you practice at it and you work at it and you don't give up at it, someday somebody's going to be coming and asking you for your autograph. That is a writer down. And Robert says he's taking notes. I'm taking notes over here. That was very well said. Thank you, Robert's teacher. And thank you, Robert. Question two. What's the <laughs> biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business so we can all learn from it and maybe uh, save ourselves some headache? Um, biting off more than you can chew. Uh, you know, you get that one customer that you're praying for. You're like, I just need that big break. I just need that big break. And when that one customer presents itself, and it might be a little bit more than what you are uh, able to take on, you kind of got to be like Donald Trump says, and he's like, you got to be able to walk away from the deal. And, you know, sometimes we get that one big break and we take on that task and it ends up to be too mighty for us. And then their, your quality of work, your culture, your everything that you put in did not come out the way that you wanted it to. So taking on a little bit more that you can chew and being OK with walking away was the lesson that I learned from it, because it, it, you don't want to hinder or harm you, what your reputation or what you've built your business to be. Two for two, my friend. Last question. What's one idea that Cleaning Nation can put into practice immediately, right away, before their head hits their pillow to improve their lives and or their businesses? I would call your competitor. Call your competitor. You see them at the bid meetings. You see them uh, as a potential proposal or that they currently had a contract that you're looking at. Call them. This pie of what we are eating at is big enough for everybody to have a slice. And so that's what we did. We recruited a lot of our competitors and our top competitors, and now they're partners of ours. If you pick up the phone today and call two competitors and say, hey, look, I see what you're doing. I like what you're doing. How can we come together and, and be able to take on this, this, this big piece of pie and us both be able to have a good lunch? Beautiful. Well said. I'm not even going to comment. It's so good. I'm going to let it sit. Robert, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your passion, your desire to grow. I appreciate you. I know that Cleaning Nation appreciates you. If you want to check out Robert's show notes page and of course, get everything you need to grow your cleaning company, you'll find it all at growmycleaningcompany.com. Leave your questions or comments, your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.